Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 3, Lesson 4, Understanding Equations. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students understand that an equation is a statement of equality between two expressions. Students build an algebraic expression using the context of a word problem and use the expression to write an equation that can be used to solve the word problem. The first thing I'd like you to do is pause the video and complete the opening exercise and continue when you are ready. So in this problem, your parents are redecorating the dining room and want to place two rectangular wall sconce lights that are 25 inches wide along a 10 foot, eight inch wall. So the distance between the lights and the distance from each light to the nearest edge of the wall are the same. Let the distance between a light and the nearest edge of the wall be X feet. Write an expression in terms of X for the total length of the wall, and then use the expression and the length of the wall given in the problem to write an equation that can be used to find the distance. So the first thing is, it was really nice that they gave us a picture of this scenario, but I would highly suggest that if they didn't, it would be very smart to actually create a similar representation here so that we can see what this is. It helps us to get a better understanding of it. So they said that the distance between these should all be X. Now, the first thing that I notice, and we really want to pay attention to because they love to throw this type of problem in on the state exam, where you have inches here and here, but this one is in feet. And that's a problem because they need to all be the same unit. It would probably be easiest for us to turn the 25 inches into feet. So we know that there are 12 inches in a foot. So if I take 25 inches, divide it by 12 inches, that will tell us how many feet are in 25 inches. So we get two and one twelfth of a foot. So we can rewrite these as two and one twelfth foot. So the first thing they ask us to do is to write this as an expression in terms of X for the total length of the wall. And it's important that you know the difference between an expression and an equation. While both of them can involve a variable, an equation is the only one that has an equal sign. Notice that you almost have the word equals in equation, so that's how you can remember the two. If they're asking for an expression, you should only be giving variables, numbers, and operations, but not an equal sign. So first, I need to start with looking at the scenario. If we wanna know what I can do, given all of this information, is write a total length of this wall using these terms here. So if I'm finding a total, we know that that would be the operation of addition. So the first thing I'm going to do is show them being added together for my expression. So we have x, 2 and 1 12th, plus x, plus 2 and 1 12th, plus x. Now notice this qualifies for an expression because it has variables, numbers, and operations, but it does not have an equal sign. The second thing they ask us to do is to write an equation that can be used to find the distance x. So what we do know is that if this expression represents the length of the total wall, and we know the total length of the wall is 10 and 2 thirds foot, they would therefore be equivalent. So our equation would be created by adding on an equal sign and setting it equal to 10 and 2 thirds. Now, this is only one equation that we could have written, but you'll notice that we have some like terms within this equation. So what I can do is create an equivalent equation by combining like terms. So here I have one, two, three x's. And if I add together two and one twelfth with two and one twelfth, I get four and two twelfths, which reduces to one sixth. So here we have created two equivalent equations that could both be used to solve the same problem. Now, if I were actually gonna go through and solve this, you'll notice that if I started with this equation, the first thing I would have done is this step anyway to combine like terms and make the problem simpler. So it's important to recognize 
like terms and simplifying to make a problem easier before you solve it. So let's look at example one. The ages of three sisters are consecutive integers. The sum of their ages is 45, find their ages. Now the first thing you need to know, and not all people know this, so let's have a little quick discussion about it. What are consecutive integers? So consecutive integers means we have integers that go in order. So this could be one, two, three, four, and so on. The key to this is that the next number is always one greater than the last. So the first thing they'd like me to do is to use a tape diagram to find their ages. So if we think about this, we have three sisters. We would have a youngest sister, a middle sister, and an oldest sister. So let's start with our youngest and let that be our single unknown box. So if they're consecutive ages, the difference between the youngest sister and the middle sister would be one year. So here, we would take the youngest sister's age and simply add on one year to get the middle sister. And likewise, if I want the oldest sister, she's going to be one year older than the middle sister, so we'll take the middle sister's age and again add on one more year. So in the problem, they told us the sum of their ages is 45. We know that sum needs to add together. So we're gonna put all three of these sisters' ages in a single bar. So we have the youngest, the middle, and the oldest sister. And we know the total of their ages is 45 so the value <clears throat> so the value of this bar is 45. now we don't really like the order that this bar is in or the way it's arranged so let's rearrange it and put our life terms together so we're going to have the same size bar but we're going to put together the ones and that will give us a total of three and then the other unknown boxes will be put together. So if we isolate just this portion of the bar, we would take 45 and take away the three, leaving us with 42. And if all three of these are the same, we can divide it by three. So 42 divided by three gives us 14. And so now we know that the sisters' ages are 14, 15, and 16. Notice I had a word problem, so I ended with a word answer. Part B says, if the youngest sister is X years old, describe the ages of the other two sisters in terms of X. And what can really help me here is to go back to the bar model here. And if this one is going to be X, this one we can see is x plus 1, and this one is x plus 1 plus 1, which is really x plus 2. So the middle sister here would be x plus 1, and the oldest would be x plus 2. So again, if we took this scenario, the sum of their ages, the youngest sister was x, sum means to add. So we're going to add on the middle sister's age plus the oldest sister's age. So this expression represents the sum of the sister's ages. And then we're going to turn this into an equation by setting it equal to what the sum of their ages was equivalent to, which is 45. Part C says determine if your answer from part A is a solution to the equation you wrote in part B. So they're telling us to take our answer from part A and plug it in for part B. Now we found that a single x was equivalent to 14, so I'm going to 
replace each of the x's with 14 and evaluate. So we can simplify here. This would be 14 plus 15 plus 16. And I know that 14 plus 15 plus 16 is 45. So we know that our answer from part A was correct and our equation from part B is also correct because it works for the ages that we found in part A. So just to review some important vocabulary that we have been essentially talking about here, we have looked at variables, which is a symbol such as a letter that represents a number. It's basically a placeholder for a number. So I always like to look at it as it's just some number that I don't know. An equation is a statement of equality between two expressions. And really the key element here, it must have an equal sign. A number sentence is a statement of equality between two numerical expressions. Really the key to this, it does not include a variable. And finally, a solution to an equation with one variable is a number that when substituted for that variable in both expressions makes the equation a true number sentence. And we saw that in example one part C we evaluated and found that 45 was equivalent to 45. So that 14 that we plugged in is considered to be a solution.